I think it was about late February that um, I went into shielding because I have underlying um, health issues. So I worked full time in in education, and uh, it was it was difficult at first for my peers around me at work to understand why I was not so much fearful but cautious in the last 10 years. I have spent a lot more time in developing self, you know, from within. And I think that's something I, you know, a lot of a lot of young people take for granted. Being a lesbian to being a trans person, um, I would always carry my pride with me. I don't think in 2020, 2021, you know, we, we, we should be having to fight the same fight that has been fought for 10, 20 years. You know, we shouldn't we shouldn't still be in the same situation, you know, um, and something has got to change. And I, I, I hope that I hope that we can get there someday. I'm pleased to present musical legend Sean King's story. My name is Sean King. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. I am a actor, musician, and I am currently representing a new formed charity in its birthing stage um, called uh, Black Trans Alliance. And we are currently working in promoting and enhancing the voices of Black trans people within the UK and beyond. When COVID-19 really hit, um, I think when it first hit in um, in Asia, no one was really paying attention to it. Um, but for me, I I take it I took it quite seriously because I knew it was going to it was going to be something that was going to spread worldwide. I was able to continue working from home, and that that wasn't affected in any way because working in education and working in technology. It was, it was definitely the highlight of, of my career. Is it the news? No, but there is actual people around me that have been affected by this virus. And yes, they have been able to live to tell the story and some have lost family members who haven't been able to live through it, you know? I know a lot of people lost jobs and you know a lot of people haven't been able to um, financially support themselves. Protest recently when, you know, the whole George Floyd thing happened and then all the other, you know, black trans people who have been any murders or stuff like that here in the UK being, you know, coming out um, to friends or family, you know, because I know that's a, that's a really tough situation. Counseling um, is definitely needed and, and um, peer support is also needed. I think a, a lot of more organizations are now getting younger um, trans people involved. I feel that funding is always a difficult situation because, you know, you have to, in order to get funding, you have to play the game. I think before now, I would focus so much on um, having to be out and having to be seen or having to go out and, you know, and, and whereas now I'm not really, I'm not really bothered because like, if I'm out or not, it doesn't it doesn't matter to the to the people to, to the next person next to me. It doesn't matter if I come out or not. You know, it's it's me. It's 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 my own issue that I'm thinking that oh I have to go out. I have to go out. And I feel like you know UK wide. I feel I don't know whether we're suppressing it. You know, um, I, I don't know whether whether people are afraid to to speak out about their experiences in the LGBT community or in the wider community, being an LGBT person is power, um, power within self, power within community. It's not changed in the many years since I've, I've come out from 
being a lesbian to being a trans person, um, I would always carry my pride with me. I will always be powerful um, in my voice, in representing my community, in you know, being a part of a community or a louder voice. That's, that's, I think that's what pride means to me. Pride to me is power. We should just be unit, be unity. There should be unity in there. And I, I don't know why, why that's an issue. I don't know why, why we're missing, why we're missing that. And I don't know, I can't, I can't fix, I know I can't fix it on my own. And I, 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 I wish I could, but I feel that we would be some, in such a better place if we were all one unit. The flag spreading the six color love, representing all stars, never receive the hug. This one is for you as much as it is for me. Hold your head to the stars and let your heart speak for thee. That was, and it was the, I used to be on stage with a pride flag and there was pride flags everywhere, like it was crazy. But now, you know, that, that, that's changed. <laughs> you know, there's no longer six colors, but you know, we, as, as a community, I think as we grow, you know, we, we have to adapt and, you know, I feel that everyone will need to feel represented. What's up, people? feel any any um ill ill malice about the flag being you know upgraded i feel like we needed an upgrade so you know everyone everyone has to feel welcomed and and you know a part of a part of something so i feel like you know the flag being i don't think we need to reclaim it i think i think we need to wave it more and and you know and just be proud of who we are you know the fact that we have different color different flags i didn't even I didn't even know we had all these different type of flags, you know, the bisexual flag is different, the trans flag is different, the you know, I didn't even know we had all these separate flags, you know what I mean? But it's, it's how does the wider, how would the wider community, the wider, wider society, I would say, need to be more inclusive. Um, I think the, the ignorance that separates us from them, only the young, the younger generation can change that, and it's going to be a difficult situation for them because I know a lot of young people who are in school these days, and they're like, "I might be bisexual, I might be trans, I might be this, I might be that." Oh, you know, I'm asexual or I'm pansexual, you know. And in school, this is something that would have never been a conversation you know, when I was coming up. So the fact that young people today are open about identity and, you know, and I know that it's, it's been an issue uh, with having um, gender identity lessons and stuff like that, but it's, it's a real thing, you know, it's, it's not like, it's not like we're, we're forcing something that doesn't exist. The fact that it exists that you know, people need to know about it, and if we if we educate people about it, then it will be a better world for us to live in. You know, it will be a more inclusive world for us to live in, and I feel that it all stems from education. And I think, you know, obviously, as a young person, you can't. I'm thinking of my younger self. You can't go home after learning a great lesson about gender identity in you know in a black household and said oh mom dad guess what i learned today you know i learned that there's people who are you know non-binary and, and bisexual and it's great and it's you know it's a good thing you know that wouldn't be welcomed in their household you know and i think i think the education should i wouldn't say it should start at home because you know the adults is the one that controls the little ones you know and if they are 
closed minded, then the little ones can't be open minded, you know, because they are only going to feel suppressed. They can only be themselves outside of the house. Oh, I couldn't say that when I go home. You know, I couldn't tell that to my mom and dad. You know what I mean? So um, the wider community needs more education. And I think more for the BAME community, it's, it's, it stems from, I think it's, <laughs> It stems from the 70s and the 80s when, you know, the um, the HIV thing uh, er era came out and it was it was so focused on um, gay gay sex. Forget that everyone can get HIV, forget that it's a widespread disease, but it was focused so much on, you know, um, the LGBT community that I feel it stemmed all that negativity has stemmed from that and it's, it's almost like they don't want to get over that you know it's something that they they continue to carry throughout generations and generations because you know their grandmother or their great grandmother had you know had people who you know who lived in their area or who lived next door who was who they didn't know it was gay or and then you know it's it's a it's, it, it goes way beyond, way beyond us as as we as we as we live today. And I think for the future generations, I think that if if we can educate the old, the older generation, they can then have that freedom to express themselves and to grow and make a better future for those to come. The future for me stems from. The younger generation, I think, um, <clears throat> we're going to become more and more dependent on our young LGBT um, community who I think have a loud voice um, providing that they get the opportunity and, and the platform to express themselves and with doing that, they can only but empower those around them, um, even elder LGBT people who have lived, I would say, stealth or or um, a secluded life, because they they've had it instilled in them that they couldn't express themselves, and I feel that that you know that will only come from more visibility, um, more representation. Uh, more education, more understanding, and we can we can only move forward as a community if we are inclusive as a community. In my previous years, I've I've worked in in educational institutions, um, running sessions with young people as well as as adults and teachers, and you know, um, giving them tools of how to um, best recognize. LGBT youth or you know an LGBT person who may be in need of support or something like that so I think outreach it's gonna it, I'd say outreach work even though in this current time it's gonna be a difficult situation but you know we can only do so much and we can utilize technology as much as we can to reach further communities that you know may that we may not be able to get to in that sense but it really depends on how and how we how we use our platform to reach them to make them want to engage i think the separation of our of our communities lgbt and and you know non and and cis i think that separation that separational gap needs to be bridged one way or the other um, and I know that there's a there's a lot of individuals who you know young young and old but mostly young people who have who have been living a suppressed life um, because they can't be themselves 